dropping the bomb. <laughs> Welcome to Covers' his NHL Puck Prop with Jingles and Coco, where one of us is a former first-round NHL pick, and the other one is me. I'm your co-host, Josh Jingles, betting analyst for Covers.com, joined by 14-year NHL vet Carlo Koliakovo. What is up, Coco? What's going on, buddy? Looking for a bounce back today is what we're looking for. Yeah, we're sweeping the Leafs one, and then uh, we're struggling on the other one. But we've had we had a profitable week last week. Boys are up over eleven units, and we're doing what we usually do, which is fade the Red Wings, kicking things off. This Kachuk, we're starting off with Brady Kachuk anytime goal plus one ninety here. Ottawa is actually an underdog in this game. This Kachuk Norris Joseph line is heating up. They have a great mm-hmm. matchup in the Detroit team that's allowing four point five goals per game over their last ten. Each skater on this line is scoring north of a point a game over their last 12. And I ask you, Coco, it's late in the season. Are these young non-playoff teams more motivated than, say, a more veteran one? And how important is it for this line to play well down the stretch to build chemistry for what is hopefully a better next season? Well, to answer your first question, these are the hardest teams to play against. You know, teams that have nothing to play for and are just going out and playing free and trying to have fun. and you know, pad up their points so that they finish the season on a good note. And I would, I expect that's what, you know, the top players in Ottawa try to focus on. You talk about Brady Kachuk. He's having a career year right now, Um, you know, with 26 goals, probably wants to get to 30 because 30 is that sort of milestone that guys like to finish the season with, especially when you're this close. So it's, it's in sight, right, for him. And you talked about Matthew Joseph. He's been a a welcome addition on that top line because he brings a a lot of speed uh, and a lot of youth uh, to that, to that time, to that line that really hasn't had much, you know, uh, difficulty producing all year, especially playing alongside Batherson. Well, Batherson is out and that hurt probably hurts Kachuk's chances on the power play to produce, but I don't think it hurts his chances five on five to produce. Cause as you said, Joseph has been uh, finding it, you know, his way in Ottawa. So, you got to like the value here against with Brady Kachuk, plus 90 to score. I mean, he's coming off of a game where he scored two goals uh, against Winnipeg. And maybe that's a jump start that he needs, especially without Batherson in the lineup. And let's be honest, this team is looking towards next season. So it's it's not a matter of trying to you know bank points for this for the season this year. It's actually better if they don't bank points because they improve their lottery position from the draft. But you want to pad your points statistically. And I, I expect Kachuk's in that same mindset you mentioned joseph there on the wing not getting much power play time but does have 10 even strength points over his last 10 games he's really driving that line right. on five on five and kachuk obviously the center or sorry on the wing but also on that power play one i was looking at josh norris he's actually the most overvalued here at minus 190 for a point which surprised me a bit so getting kachuk i think kachuk was minus 154 for a point, which is something you might want to drop on, but plus 190 for a goal. He's been playing better of late. He had two goals in his last game. He's tied with Norris with six goals over their last 10 games. Joseph, great price, plus 360 on that top wow, line. Wow, nice. Yeah. And the, 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 the one thing you really got to like about Kachuk is that he's in and around the net all the time, right? He's that rare <laughs> breed of power forward. I mean, he's in the corners. He's in front of the nets. He's in goalie spaces. He's banging in rebounds and loose pucks and stuff like that. So, hey, maybe just standing in front of the net, which is something his dad used to love to do. Big Walt, who I played with in St. Louis, he always used to say, if you can't hit the net, try to hit me and bounce it in. So maybe he's passing that down to his younger boys. Yeah, solid, solid finish here, hopefully for Ottawa down the stretch here. Kachuk, Norris, Joseph Line. Lots of value here with Ottawa being the underdog. We're hitting Kachuk anytime goal, plus 190. Jumping over Buffalo at Toronto, tough to squeeze out some value on the Toronto side, but Austin Matthews over four and a half shots plus 100. Usually don't see these lines at four and a half. Usually they're at three and a half, but it's Austin Matthews who we're talking about. And it's, it's not, it's not a question of 60 goals right now. We're we're talking 70 goals. Yeah. Yeah. FanDuel right now has a boost 70 goals plus 800. Look, I, I think it's, it's, it's nice to talk about, but it's really, really tough to envision him reaching that, that <laughs> benchmark. And I wouldn't put it past him, to be honest with you. I mean, how can you be surprised with anything Matthews does this this year? He's got 51 goals in 50 games. 
if he scores nine goals in his next 10 games, he's going to have 60 in 60. Think about how incredible that is yeah. of what he can accomplish. And, hey, you don't get there without shooting the puck, right? And this is why we like this, this prop is because Matthews right now, not only is he scoring at an incredible pace for something that all year, he's shooting at an incredible pace. Six shots last game, 12 shots against Dallas <laughs> in the game before, eight shots against Florida, seven shots against Tampa Bay. Obviously, the players around him know that they want to get this record for him too, so they're going to try to find him as much as they possibly can. But the one thing that I really, really like about this game, it's about retribution. Remember the last time they played? Matthews got a two-game suspension against Darlene, so you got to think – He's going to be a little bit more pissed off to play today and pissed off to light up the Buffalo Sabres. I don't necessarily think they light up the Buffalo Sabres, but this team has been known for dictating pace of play and offensive play against the teams that they played in. I mean, just go recently as the last Saturday against Montreal. It was a 3-2 score, but they definitely dominated, uh, you know, it was ozone time and puck possession and, and shots on them, stuff like that. So Matthews led the way in that department. I expect them to do the same tonight. How scary would it be to give Austin Matthews any more reason to dominate a game? <laughs> like yeah. it's like I mean, he's, he's, don't poke the bear, as they say, right? Oh, 100 percent He's averaging over five shots per game since February 1st. He's 11 and 4 to the over in his last 15. He, like you said, 33 shots over his last four games. Right. The boys are absolutely just feeding him. The revenge angle is real here. Matthews is on a mission tonight. Buffalo is bottom six in shots allowed. And, I mean, Toronto did get embarrassed in their last two games against Buffalo, so there's also that advantage too. So Austin Matthews over four and a half shots plus 100. That's probably the best value on the board for the Leafs, I think, in that game as they're minus 450 favorites. Mm -hmm. Jumping over to a late one, Anaheim, Florida. Trevor Zegras over 0 0.5 points, minus 122. When looking at props, finding big underdogs can generate a great price, especially in the point market, and that's what we're doing here with the Ducks. Anaheim, massive plus 350 favorite, meaning we're getting a great deal on their player prop points. Zegras is a point-per-game guy over his last 10, sits four back from the team lead in points. Is this a spot, Coco, where the Ducks could surprise the Panthers a little bit now that they're healthy and having nothing to play for? Uh, it's tough to think that they could play, you know, surprise in this matchup because Florida's had a bunch of matchups like this already over their last stretch, and it just doesn't seem like they've it's phased uh, their offensive production. Uh, I still think Florida wins this game. Um, you know, Anaheim has, you know, a little bit of a younger club. They're not getting great goaltending. They've got the, the news around uh, Ryan Getzlaff potentially retiring, but – they also have a potential rookie of the year candidate right here in, in Trevor Zegras. And I think that's what's on his mind, you know, in this last stretch of the couple of games in, in, left in the season is, you know, right now, if you look at the race, he's trailing Michael Bunting only by three points for most points by a rookie. He's got points in his last three games. And even the points that he doesn't have, this guy's still making highlight reels because of, <laughs> of, of plays that he's trying to make. Yeah. offensively with between the legs, with the Michigan on the stick, you know, wrapping it around behind the net. So, you know, if there's one guy that's going to be offensively motivated on this Anaheim Ducks team, it's definitely going to be Trevor Zegers because not only is he, do they want him to try to win you know, the, the rookie scoring race, the rookie of the year, but he's only four points behind, uh, you know, the next player on his team to lead the team in scoring. So, a lot of motivation here for Zegris to record a point tonight, and you're not laying too much to do it. Yep, and the Panthers, they they do give up some goals sometimes. I know they only allowed one that goal means, in the Nashville game that yeah. we needed. We just needed a Yossi assist. We probably no laid the biggest kidding. juice of the season, <laughs> but they couldn't do it there. But they are allowing 3.4 goals per game over their last 10, and although uh, big favorites in Anaheim, Anaheim does have a chance to pot a couple. First line center, PP1. Uh, Zegras, best opportunity to get on the board, I think, on this Anaheim team. Riding, like you said, riding a three-game point streak, seven and three to the over in his last ten. So I'll be happy to take him over zero point five points, minus one twenty-two. Well, that will do it for us on covers puck props. Head over to covers.com, check out the odds page, do the shopping, look around. Just with that Matthews goal prop, like I said, between minus two fifty 
at minus 150. There are bargains to be had between books. And now that Ontario is open for business, shop around is the best thing that we can tell you to do. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button. Let us know what you think in the comments. He's Coco. I'm Jingles. This is Covers. Lead us out, Coco. Back on track tonight.